In this video, I'll be helping you with the Alex problem type called using the rational zeros theorem to find all zeros of a polynomial rational zeros. And here we're given the function f of x and told that it has at least one rational zero. And we're asked to find all of the zeros for this function. And I'll start with the rational zeros theorem, which says that all of the possible zeros will be of the form p over q where p is the possible factors of the constant term and q is the possible factors of the leading coefficient. So for p, our possible factors of 4 are plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2, and plus or minus 4. For q, the possible factors of 9 are plus and minus 1, plus and minus 3, and plus or minus 9. And so to find all of the possible p's over q's, I can start with 1 over 1 would be a plus or minus 1. Other possible denominators would be 3. That would give us a plus or minus 1 over 3. And 9, giving us a plus or minus 1 over 9. Moving to the next p value, we would have plus or minus 2 over 1, or plus or minus 2, plus or minus 2 over 3 which is plus or minus two thirds, also plus or minus two over nine. And then for four, plus or minus four over one, which is just a plus or minus four, plus or minus four over three, and plus or minus four over nine. So we have a pretty extensive list of possible zeros. To test each one of these and determine if it is actually a zero, we can use synthetic division where our coefficients are inside, and then we test each of these solutions. I'll start by testing positive one, and for synthetic division, I'll bring down the first term, multiply, one times nine is nine, adding gives us 18, one times 18 is 18, adding again gives us two, multiplying one and two, is 2, and since this leaves us a remainder and not 0, then I know that this is not a possible solution. So I'm going to cross off positive 1, but then we would also need to test a negative 1. So negative 1 times 9 is a negative 9. Adding gives us 0. Negative 1 times 0 is 0. Adding gives us a negative 16. Negative 16 times negative 1 gives us a positive 16, and again, we get a remainder, so negative one is not a solution either. Instead of moving on with the fractions, I'm gonna jump over to my next whole number, and I'm gonna try positive two. Two times nine is 18, adding gives us 27. Two times 27 is 54, adding gives us a 38. Multiplying two and 38 is 76. So again, I'm not getting zero here. I do have a remainder, so positive two doesn't work. I'll try negative two. Negative two times nine is a negative 18. Adding nine and negative 18 is a negative nine. Negative two times a negative nine, a positive 18. Adding gives me two, and then multiplying negative two times two is a negative four. So this division has no remainders, we know that one of the zeros will be negative two, and I can rewrite this function now. If negative two is a zero, then I can write this as an x plus two times, and these are my new coefficients. So at nine x squared minus nine x plus two, and to find the zeros that result from this portion, I can attempt to factor by either trial and error or the AC method, and by trial and error, this would either be 3x and 3x, or 9x and 1x, and since that final term is a positive two, the signs have to be the same. I can use a minus two and a minus one to multiply to get that two, and then my middle term, negative 6x, negative 3x, does give me the minus 9x, so I have successfully factored the second portion, and these will provide additional zeros. 3x minus 2 equals 0 gives us 3x equals 2, and dividing 
x equals two thirds. So this is my second zero. And then from the other side, three x minus one equals zero. Three x would equal one and x equals one third. So I have my two additional zeros, two thirds and one third. And I can write those along with the other zero. And this would be my full list of rational zeros for this polynomial.